Hi, welcome back. A while ago, we found out that a normal human could become Elden Lord and defeat Melania. It was a very difficult but still fun and rewarding challenge run. And then, From Software released this. One of, if not the most brutally difficult DLCs ever made, with one of the most difficult final bosses ever made. It was time for a normal Earth human to represent us all once more, but this time in the Shadowlands. Now, what are the rules? First, no flasks, red or blue, because humans can't magically heal or instantly replenish anything by drinking gross, glowing mystery goo. No physic either, we can't be artificially giving ourselves magical abilities that an earthling wouldn't have. And in that same vein, no talismans, great runes, sorceries, incantations, or stat-boosting gear. This means no defensive or offensive buffs of any kind. To be consistent, we also can't use any Shadow Tree Fragments to increase our Shadow Tree Blessing level either. This is by far the most important mechanic in the DLC to strengthen both your attack power and defenses, and it's completely off-limits. Finally, I can't really level because humans can't turn runes into strength. I did allow an extremely small amount of leveling, as shown on screen, because humans would get a little stronger from surviving in a harsh environment. The only stat I didn't cap at a very low level was Endurance, because humans can run marathons, we're actually really good at Endurance. Also, just a tiny bit of leveling does enable me to wield a few extra weapons that I couldn't otherwise use. This isn't an issue in level 1 runs, because you can use talismans, great runes, and your physic to wield just about any weapon, but this run was way, way more difficult than a level 1 run, which I've already completed. Anyways, the stats you see on screen now will be my stats for the whole run other than the first couple of bosses in the base game. Things that are okay this run. Physical attacks and ashes of war that don't involve anything supernatural. Rolling. Humans can roll on the ground. If you don't like that rolling gives you iframes, I do not care. That's like complaining my character never poops like a human would. It's still a video game. Dying is very human too. We're seeing what's possible under these conditions. Not if it can be done in one attempt. Weapon upgrades and infusions are fine. An expert blacksmith reforges your weapon and the human swings the sword the exact same way as before. This is different from something like a glintstone staff, which would require special knowledge and magical abilities to use. We're human. A magic wand is just a stick. Craftable items like pots and greases are fine. Even hefty pots are good. Look at what's in them. Usually something like mold and a flower. It'd be like throwing a beach ball. I did not use the one that's full of rocks, though, because that one would be too heavy. Throwing knives and kukris are fine, too. Bows and crossbows are good, as long as I'm not using magical ashes of war. Lastly, before we get started, I don't recommend this run. It was not a fun one. It's the kind of run that can ruin a game for you, so I hope you learn from my example and don't do this to yourself. Because this run also requires near perfection for the entirety of every long fight, I am going to focus mostly on the winning attempts, because this is the best gaming of my life. If you want to see me truly suffer, you'll just have to stop by the stream. Well, it's time. I'm going to quickly breeze through the base game since I already made that video, and then the real challenge begins. First, we ran straight to market and hit him with a club until he stopped moving. Oh my gosh, how has he not had his poise broken this whole fight? I feel like I've gotten so many charged R2s off. Maybe it's right here. Who knows? Nope, one more? Come on. I'm going for it. There. <laughs> you know what? It was worth it. I wanted the poise break. I knew I was close. We lost our no-hit, but we gained... Really? We could have easily no-hit him, but I got greedy because I wanted the poise break. So, that's fine. It's not a no-hit challenge. It's a no-heal challenge. So we're good. Then I bought this Vi Hander from the Merchant in Weeping Peninsula. This Vi is one of the few weapons I can wield, but only while two-handing. And then Gokrik didn't pose too much of a challenge to get our first Great Rune. Well, this helps. This certainly helps. I didn't charge. I took too long. My timing was a little off. Interesting. <laughs> that was a cool roll, man. You really did it, Godric. Thank you. Thank you, Godric. Right into that. <laughs> Come on. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't get hit. 
I do not want to do this again. Oh gosh, I'm gonna die. Thank goodness. If that fire touched me, I was gone. There we go. <laughs> Alright, that was close. He almost got us there for a sec. I got tired of knocking DTS off his cliff in challenge runs, so I wanted to kill him properly, but then he killed me. So to pay him back, I took down a bunch of his health during his slow opening, and then made a decision to be funny that actually turned out great. There we go. He embarrassed me, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing bow for the rest of the fight. I have decided. That I, I cannot be stopped. <laughs> There's just not a lot of openings in this fight. Oh, was that a bleed? Alright, well, we're probably not getting another bleed, so I'm just going to switch to regular arrows. Pop. They do more damage. I mean, not much, but... Gosh, jump shots are so good. It's like unreasonable. So bad. Normal Radon was normal Radon. I'm not going to waste too much more time here. Now I just had to beat Moog and go to the DLC. This rule set did present a big problem though. It turns out there is literally no way to survive Moog's knee heal attack he does during his phase transition because I can't use the Physic tier to negate the attack and I can't use flasks to heal through it. I also can't do enough damage to end the fight in phase one like I was able to do during my level one run. Because again, this run is so much worse. This attempt shows the best I could possibly do. So was the DLC Human Rules Challenge dead before it could even begin? No, there was one solution that I would only use here to access the DLC. You see, humans have friends. So I called on my friend Bread to help me do enough damage to one cycle mode. Luckily, Bread is no mere human and brought his giant chicken wing of death, so we were able to do this. A damage with some kukris as he's walking towards us. Wow, eight it's damage. Eight damage. Uh, it's 41. That's crazy. I mean, I think headshots really do matter. Dang. <laughs> well, it's also like the, when he staggered. Why does he heal? What? Oh, we can get him! We can get him! Come on! Come on! Yes! Fred! Yes. You did it! You did it! Oh, well done. Thank you. That was the only way. That was the only way. Now, technically, I could go to the DLC, but I wanted to get the Smithing Stone Bell Bearings first so I could fully upgrade my weapons. Don't worry, though, my damage would still be absolutely pathetic in the DLC. So, Gold Free was Gold Free. Morgot was Morgot. Nice. Then it was off to the mountaintop of the Giants. Fire Giant can be a little janky with the uneven Rocky Arena and the bouncing Fire Breath, but he played nice, for the most part, and wasn't too much trouble. Yo! Take me. No, we're not getting that. So close. There we go. <laughs> that was some good RNG. He made that one easy on us. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing as last time, even though it's really dumb. I just don't want to explode. There we 
There it is. He's just sitting on that rock. He's an absolute moron. He's finally out. <laughs> All that time was just for that last hit. Now for the Godskin Duo, the last base game boss on our hit list as they guard the ability to purchase Smithing Stone 7s and 8s. Luckily, they just can't stop falling asleep around me. Even with zero buffs, low stats, and a slightly underleveled weapon, sleeping targets are not that big of a threat. Sleep pots have nothing in them but mushrooms and flowers, so I'm okay with throwing them. The only challenge here is that I cannot refill my FP bar with a blue flask, so I couldn't even throw all of the pots I had crafted. But luckily I had enough. This wouldn't be the only time FP would potentially be an issue, though. Also, why didn't he go into phase two there? That was really weird. Uh-oh, I'm in the ground. Okay, we did get the charge off, but I'm not sure it's better. We got, we, we've never been in such a good position. This is going really, really well. All right, he's out, he's out, he's out. We have plenty of FP. All right, if nothing goes wrong, we should be good. I'm hoping that if I hit him in the side, it'll take him longer to turn around, and I can do that easier. That seemed to work okay. All right, phase transition. Yep, okay. So we got this one, we got this one. So, one, two, three, go, go. No, I didn't get him. I didn't get him. Oh no, I did get him. Okay, we're fine. See? Super easy. No problem at all. And now I've made it to the DLC, and the real challenge was about to begin. I started with Rolana, who's not even a required boss, but it's a fun fight and I like it. Unlike bosses like Promise Consort Radon, Rolana's attack selection is largely based on positioning, which makes her feel more intelligent, intentionally designed, and fair, but it does also make her easier to manipulate. By staying at a distance, you can force Rolana into repeating safer attacks that are easy for you to punish and get away clean so you can reset for the next exchange. This is especially important since DLC fights are long due to my low damage, and I almost always die in a single hit. This fight is early enough in the DLC that I can survive one of her glint blades, as you'll see. But that's the only attack I can survive. Light rolling definitely helps here too. I actually didn't realize I was mid-rolling for the first handful of attempts, and this was actually the first attempt where I was light rolling. Oh yeah, watch, we're gonna win the fight on this attempt now. I swear. We're gonna get it right now. All I needed to do was take my clothes off. <laughs> well, maybe I should poison her again, now that I'm actually light rolling. Maybe it was the bow. Oh yeah, she's going down. Well, we got hit by one arrow. That's not good. I 
I really hope I can rot her in one rot during the phase transition. That would be such a relief. Man, I don't know why anyone would do this fight mid-rolling. This is so much better. And like, if I'm gonna die in one hit anyway, what difference does it make? Transition? Oh, definitely. And she is rotted. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> well, this will be interesting. Lowers. Ooh, she almost got me. All right, we're still moving. Yeah, that's still clean. We can still get that off with the uh, sprinting R1. Ooh, I should have punished. Nice, okay, we know this one. Lowers. Nope. That was brutal. What is she doing? <laughs> She's throwing everything at us now. One more hit. Die. It was the light roll. I didn't know I was I was mid-rolling. That's so crazy. That made it so much easier. Alright, where's my spot? Where's my spot? It's right here. There's nothing you can do, Dragon Man! I'm invincible! Okay, <laughs> worth it. Worth worth every attempt. And if you ever need a strat, that's it. We figured it out. I also wanted to beat Ancient Dragon Man to access some extra hefty pots for later, but this is actually a good example of how NPC-style boss fights work one-on-one -on -one versus the horrendous Leta fight that you'll see later. I also experimented with crouch poking here in two prior attempts, which I found is not consistent and can get you randomly killed at any moment. Sometimes they just sit there and take it, and sometimes they can randomly roll out and punish you. Same with these Vihander's three-hit combo. Overall, though, this was still by far the easiest DLC fight of this run. Probably. Yeah, let's do that next time. I mean, I could just, like, actually try and fight him normally. You know? But what fun is fighting him normally? Like, this is how I fight almost every NPC. You bait out an attack, and then you do your combo, and then you leave. And then you bait another sword swing, and then you hit him three times, and then you leave. And then it heals, but you still get to hit him three times. No, no, just once. I think they made Ancient Dragon Man smarter. He feels way smarter to me than he used to be. Uh, I got caught on the rock! Get out of here. Ancient stupid man. That was my most mature insult I could come up with at the time. <laughs>
Alright, we got one crouch poke in there. I need my stamina recharge. <laughs> Alright, come on. There we go. One, two, three, and we're out. There we go. See, instead of trying cheese strats, I should just beat them. You know? <laughs> that seems like a better strategy. Just beat them. Runs like this where you have to play mistake-free for an extended period of time really expose the flaws in some bosses, while in others you find the bosses way better than you understood. For me, Mesmer is one of those that is way better. This fight absolutely delivers on From Software's design ethos of tough but fair. The fight is extremely well-paced and wonderfully animated. It's not perfect. Mesmer's fire has some questionable hitboxes, both in terms of their size and the duration they linger, and it's not great when the snakes in Phase 2 come from out of bounds and clip through the walls or Mesmer's thrown in the back, but these are small complaints about a fight that is otherwise an absolute joy to learn and perfect. It is a difficult fight and did require a whole stream of practice the day before, but this attempt, this absolute beauty of a fight, was totally worth it. It's just gonna happen one of these times. It's gonna feel just like any other attempt, except we're gonna get good RNG, and we're gonna come out on top. Oh. Doesn't help to just straight up miss your attacks, though. That was really weird. Good attack. I'm going for the place break. Nope, he gave it to me anyway though. We'll get it now for sure. Yep. <laughs> uh. Alright, frost is gone, which means we're building towards another frost proc. Oh, he didn't do the follow-up. That's weird. Well, he's doing it now anyway. That was really kind of strange. Good RNG right there. Jump right back in, my guy. so much. Nice. <laughs> that was a risk. That was a risk. Alright, phase two. We should get either a bleed or a frost on the opening attack. So we should be able to make some quick progress in phase two. All right. What is this? really? Okay, wait. It's just this one. What is he doing? Nice, let's go. Oof. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, this one. Come on. Give me a poise break, please. Oh, this is a big one. Nope, this is a normal one. Back out. Okay. Ooh, we barely got away with that one. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Yep. Nope. This is the big one. This is the big one. Here we go. Perfect. That is perfection right there. Oh my gosh, what a fight. What a fight. Doing this again. Cool. All the spikes. Oh, come on. Give me the head slam. Not that head slam. Not that one. Last hippo attempt. Then let's go check out Romina, probably for the rest of the stream. That's kind of how the Golden Hippo fight went. But since he wasn't required, I'd come and fight him to take a break from dying in other places. This one was frustrating because there are really only two moves that present any actual threat, and both are his needle attacks in the second phase. The one where needles fall from the sky is easier, but you can still catch a random needle every now and then that instantly kills with this amount of health and no defensive talismans or buffs. The second, where he spins and sprays needles directly at you, is the worst. These are random and can kill you at any moment. The hippo also does this more when you are behind him, making it harder to get poise breaks and quickly do damage in phase two. This is why you see me playing it relatively safe. Luckily, he is very susceptible to both poison and rot, which helped a lot over the course of this fight. Now that I've crushed his soul. Please work. Okay, I wasn't sure I was gonna have time right there. <laughs> we had plenty though. We got lucky, he did a little step back. Yep, okay. Both rot and poison are procced. We're in a good spot. All right, phase two. Which is a shame. How am I alive? Nice. Let's go. That was a clutch, clutch, uh, poise break. Spike me, please. Let's go, Frost! Oh, that was luck. That was pure luck.
insane miss. Insane! Insane! Oh no. Oh my gosh. We survived so many of those. Oh my gosh! Come on, poison! Come on, poison! Die! Die, you big stupid beast! <laughs> okay! <laughs> hey, we got Hippo too! I think that's just frustrating. She's gonna kill us when the face transition. Like, it's so stupid. Like, dude, I mean, it was instant death. Remember how Mesmer was a fight that got better under these conditions? Well, Romina got so much worse. She's certainly one of the easier DLC fights casually. Under these conditions, though, the flaws and the subtle but punishing randomness are all I can see. She can clip half her centipede body outside the arena and hit you clipping back in bounds. Her phase transition will instantly kill you if you happen to be standing close, which keeps you from staying near her consistently throughout the second phase. You have to disengage, get some distance, and then force her into a move that you can counter to avoid the situation, which can pop up at any time in phase two. Even her roll attack can be nonsense, as she can get caught on walls and bounce closer to you so that her follow-up swing will frame trap you if you dodge her tail. That one almost got me near the end of this fight, even her rot butterflies can have random, unavoidable patterns depending on your positioning. Luckily, she has one move with such a big opening that it's an instant poise break with Starfish. This fight took me five painful hours to learn and to get the proper RNG to not take an unavoidable hit. This is not a fight I will look forward to under similar restrictions. Normally though, I still think it's a fun fight. Good, great camera work. Am I going to be able to leave in time for the phase transition? I mean, at least I finally got that down, you know? That's so stupid that she can do that from that distance. All right, we are absolutely cooking right now. Absolutely cooking. Do the big move again, do it again. Nope, we got the worst possible move. Into another one of the worst possible moves. <laughs> Here we go. Come on, give me the good one. Give me the good one.
Yeah, totally good and fair, right there. Oh my gosh, we had to iframe it. That's so dumb. Oh, we got lucky. That's the RNG. The RNG is on our side all of a sudden. Come on, finish her off. She's done. Get out of here. Terrible, 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 terrible boss. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that took that long, everyone. That was awful. <laughs> I apologize. Most of the running sections were actually pretty easy, which was surprising considering I can't use Assassin's Gambit or Hidden Form to be stealthy. This part though, I knew was gonna be bad. I died way more on these stairs than I did to Rolana. Luckily, armor did let me survive one hit if it wasn't a direct hit. So eventually I scraped by just sprinting through, after failing at stealth and kukris and arrows and pots and every other strategy I could think of. Come on! Come on! We can do it! Don't you dare. Don't you even think about it. Don't you even think about it back there. Don't you even think about it! <laughs> if you frame catch me. All right. Victory! The birds were also bad, but not nearly as bad as the stairs. If you move around the left side. <laughs> oh my gosh, that Romina fight. Like, casually, I still think she's a good boss. But, like, she's an absolute disaster on a no-hit run. Like, if you're, unless you're doing lots of damage. Like, if you're doing lots of damage, then you can no-hit anything. Like, the only time no-hit's actually an issue is when the fights are drawn out because you don't do damage. And we do not do damage this run. Where are those? Oh, look at us. The Leta fight, which isn't even a real boss fight, was by far the worst thing in this run. It was nothing in my level one run, as I used a bleed-infused fingerprint shield to flatten all three of them. In this run though, I don't have the stats to wield that, and I can't refill my FP either, further limiting my options. I tried shield crashing with a different shield, but it's surprisingly random and inconsistent. If you do get lucky enough to get by the first enemy, the second one, Dane, has way more health, and I can't do enough damage with these restrictions to finish him before the third combatant, Letta, finally shows up. Even if you summon, you can't stop Dane from healing, and you can't even really be aggressive for two reasons. First, Dane can hit you accidentally with oversized hitboxes while you're standing directly behind him. And second, this fight taught me that NPC recovery times are seriously broken. I'm using a heavy sword that takes long enough for Dane to recover after being hit that I can typically get one or two follow-up hits in, just like with Ancient Dragon Man. But if I hit Dane and then my summon hits Dane a frame later with a dagger, Dane uses the dagger recovery time instead of mine and can hit me before I recover from my own swing that just hit him. This is bad. According to FromSoft, if you get hit by a bus and then get a paper cut while falling to the ground, you recover from the paper cut and ignore the bus. 
That's not all. They action read pot throws and will dodge even if they're facing the wrong direction. The, the fight's a mess. And every attempt evolved into running away from two of them and getting single hits in every minute or so when they actually separate, because there are no columns or obstacles to create space like in better fights against multiple enemies. It's so bad under these conditions that I went back to an older save to progress the side quest required to keep the first enemy, Hornscent, from spawning. Then, after beating Mesmer, Hippo, and Romina again, the fight still ended up being two-on-one because I just didn't have the damage to kill Dane before Letta showed up. Thankfully, DK, another friend, called me on Discord with the perfect strategy to save me from this nightmare. That close. <laughs> Oh, see, that's what happens. Do you think that you could potentially just Y hand him towards the wall and then uh, try to and then catch him when he goes for a golden vow with Don't the um, with the shield crash? That would get him close to a wall. Your mace just bounced off the corner of the wall, and that's when you hit him. Okay, this could be a good one, actually, right here. All right. Well, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm still behind, so uh, I'm going to exit voice oh, chat. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Stay here. Your strat might be working right now. <laughs> we got the I got the golden bow RNG. I think Dane's dead. If we get good if we get good letter RNG, Dane is dead. <laughs> well did you summon did you summon the Taunt? Uh I don't remember. I hope so. Dane's down. We got the good and we got okay, it required extremely good letter RNG. <laughs> Damn. Dane went down like a Krillin. Uh, can you wild strike while you're without FP? You can, but it doesn't have the same, like, interrupting power. Oh, and it doesn't do bleed buildup either. Okay, wait. Is she is, she is poisoned. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm at the part where you just rod her. I'm at the part where you just poisoned. Get him Natan! Like, Get him Natan! No. Dude. Oh my god, this is the fucking run. Yeah. This is, they can't deal She's with dead! The She's dead! <laughs> DK, you did it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was really good RNG. That was really nice RNG. I was early. That was my fault. I was so early. Uh... I, I see I parried it anyway. I parried the foot. Luckily, the Radon fight just comes down to getting very, very good at parrying. I do die instantly if Radon breathes on me though, meaning I do have to no hit the fight and my damage is still so bad that the fight drags on long enough to give Radon too many opportunities to run away and do something janky. So after a couple hundred tries, I took a quick detour to the Lake of Rot to grab Scorpion Sting a dagger that has a low level of rot buildup. I would have gone for the Ansper Rapier, but I don't have the decks to wield it. So the plan became to switch to the Scorpion Sting at the beginning of Phase 2 to inflict rot as fast as possible, and then switch back to the Bleed Dagger to finish the fight. Then just under 100 attempts after that, Great RNG met perfect execution, and this happened. How was your Daniel treating you? Oh, he's been a nightmare today. He's, he's really misbehaving. <laughs> He's, he's misbehaving quite badly. But you know what? It's not keeping us down. Ah, maybe he's going to behave himself now. Insane RNG. Insane parry. <laughs> this guy's nuts.
Like, I wish I could... I wish I could determine that with positioning. Should I do a no weapon upgrades first, just to see what a low damage run is like? I mean, Dark Souls 3 is not that long of a game. I, I, don't, I don't think that would be a terrible idea. Although, I do think that you know enough about the game, though, Bread, that you'd probably be fine jumping right into it. I, I trust your PS3 skills. That was such a, still an abnormal sequence of events. That one was better. All right, he's still not rotted, by the way. Please rot. Please rot. That is... Hey, we rotted him! Well, now we know. It's... It's... Like, 12 hits. Including the three reposts to rot him. Back here, you coward. All right, we should be fine here, actually. We should be fine here. That's it! We got him! We got him! That's it! We did it! That's it! We got him! We got him! The rot worked! That was the hardest run I've ever done in a video game. That's it. Victory for us normal humans. If you were wondering, that Radon fight had 33 parries and 11 staggers and critical hits. I honestly think I could play that fight for a thousand more hours with this rule set and never get a faster kill. It was incredibly well optimized. Also, if you have trouble parrying, try switching parry from the left trigger to the left bumper. A button press is quicker than squeezing a trigger and will save you frames on every single parry. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this run. If you did, you should subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.